Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales of Demystified podcast. Today, we're joined by Lisa Smith, who is currently heading up the sales operation at Hazel Health. And we're looking at about seven years experience here. So I'm super excited to jump into the discussion and learn about sales ops at Hazel Health. Lisa. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. So let's kick off first by understanding how you initially got into sales operations. Yes. So it's something I sort of just fell into. I actually have a master's degree in elementary education. And when I graduated from Vanderbilt University in Nashville, they were on a hiring freeze in all the school districts. So I ended up in IT. Um, and was working at LPS Integration as a sales coordinator, which was responsible for the end-to-end sales process and assigned specific outside sales reps. Um, and it was a small company, about 50 employees, about 40 to 50, it was growing. And then um, the sales coordinator role just sort of developed. So there was a director of sales operations that was relatively new in that position. And when he moved out to become an sales rep. Um, then I moved into the director of sales operations spot there. Got it. So that first sales coordinator role, would you say that was technically sales operations? Yes. Mm-hmm. They were like sales awesome. operations support. Yeah. And then you kind of got into that role, loved it, and then moved up as space it emerged for you in the organization. Yes. There was definitely a need for it as we were starting to sell. So LPS Integration was an IT value-added reseller. So developing partnerships, evolving the sales process, helping roll out sales processes for the team, for different uh, vendors that we were selling, things like that. Got it. That makes sense. And then if we zoom into today, just to give the audience some kind of context, what is the, the number of reps that you're working with and then also the size of the operations team supporting them? Yeah. So uh, we have nine sales reps at Hazel Health today. Uh, there's about 50 employees. And um, I have always just been a sales operations team of one. Oh, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> yes. And what, when do you think, like, uh, how many reps do you think you would need to bring someone on into your team? So my last company, um, I did sales ops for a national company in logistics. And we had 80 sales reps and about 250 employees um, and four to five different offices in the United States. Um, and I was still the only sales ops really? person oh and my, sales force wow. administrator. So <laughs> it's hard to say when we were hiring for a sales ops analyst at that time to help support. Mm. Um, but what we did in the meantime was work with a, a sales ops consultant that helped support it. Yeah. I mean, that just sounds like a bit too much. The... I've asked that question to a lot of sales ops people, and it's normally like one to 15, one to 20, mm-hmm. not one to 80. So <laughs> uh, you, you, you must have been an invaluable piece of, of that organization for sure. Um, and so I, I assume, as and when Havel Health grows, you would probably advocate to bring someone into the team before you got to 80 reps. Yes, yes. For sure. Definitely okay. before 80. <laughs> yeah. Next question is the current sales tech stack. Um, what are you What are you currently working with? Yes, so a team as a team of about fifty employees. It's a smaller tech stack, but we do have some really valuable tools. So, so we've had Salesforce for almost a year now. Um, we use Outreach. We use um, HubSpot, and then the most recent one that I'm integrating is a project management tool for the post sales implementation process, which is called Cloud Coach. Got it. Okay, so re- reasonably lean. Um, that will make sense. In the past few months, I assume you guys have been going more uh, remote. What have the challenges been around that? So a lot of Hazel Health has already worked remote. Um, but this is uh, still different because we're not able to go into the schools like we used to. So the pandemic has really affected Hazel Health, which provides telehealth 
services in school districts to students in low socioeconomic school districts. Um, so the sales model has changed and we've actually experienced some rapid growth because the need for telehealth has grown. Um, <clears throat> some of those challenges would just include schools not knowing what they're doing. So our sales team um, is, you know, has multiple directions in which they can go for the sales process because the schools aren't starting like they used to and we offer telehealth in schools. So kind of navigating that and how that affects our sales process We've had to update and make changes to our sales process. Um, and then as a company, just making the extra effort to build those relationships. Because we've added about 15 to 20 employees just since March. So, And those employees usually would go to the headquarters office in California and meet some of the rest of the team. But we're not doing that right now. So um, just making the extra effort to, to build relationships and have that chit-chat via Zoom that you might normally have in an office or otherwise. Yeah, exactly. What are the changes that you have made to the sales process, if you don't mind sharing? So the sales process used to be that the schools would pay for our solution. But because of COVID-19, a lot of the restrictions around telehealth have been lifted or changed. So we can actually sell into more states now than we used to be able to. And we also no longer charge the school district. So we're able to bill Medicaid or commercial insurance directly. So it changes the sales process pretty drastically when what the sales reps are selling is at no cost to who they're prospecting to. Um, so we need yeah, to cut right. out <laughs> yeah, some of those things like negotiation and some of those typical sales steps that you have, we need it to cut out to reflect our change sales process. We also needed to pivot and we offer an at school solution, which is the telehealth at school and it's facilitated by the school nurse. Since school, a lot of schools are staying remote or offering remote options, um, our engineering team was able to come up with an at-home option so that students can have access to healthcare at home as well. Amazing. I mean, that's just, it sounds like an incredible thing. Like, obviously, it's not great, the, the virus, but that sounds mm -hmm. like a great development for the business so that now the customers are able to get funding for the product. Um, mm -hmm. So that's... That's awesome. Um, and then w within the way you were working with reps, uh, obviously, we, if now like, or it was completely remote, like well, what, what challenges did, did that uh, hand you uh, as like the person responsible for making these people productive? Um, so right now we aren't tracking things like activity, number of calls, number of meetings. We're just a very young sales team that's drastically gr experienced rapid growth and then also changed our sales process. Um, we are tracking, so we have MOUs that are sent out to the school districts. So we're tracking that and we're receiving those back at a much higher rate than previously. So a lot of my focus right now has been on streamlining the post-sales implementation process so that the customer experience can still remain as exceptional as it's always been when we had less school districts that we were implementing. Um, we've also needed a lot of cleanup, Salesforce data cleanup and things like that, uh, things that previously didn't have a process. So how do I do this? Um, just creating process around that documentation, educating the sales team, and then sharing a lot of that data with the executive and leadership team. Makes sense. I totally agree on your point about now you're doing more or more, more deals and moving through the pipeline. You, you used to be able to have the reps have their own like manual process. They did it the way they would like, but now you have more showing through. It could just be chaotic and therefore you need this streamlined documented process that everybody follows. That's a great customer experience. So that like totally makes sense for me. Um, exactly. Awesome. And it seems like all of these things that, all the, that you're doing or working on, they're not just things that you're doing because people are working remotely. These are long-term changes you're making to improve the sales process. So they're, they're basically not temporary. Right. I, I would say so. A lot of our sales reps have always been remote. So we have sales reps in Texas, New Jersey, California, Colorado, um, because we can sell into multiple states and now in all 50 states. Um, so, so yeah, a lot of them will just be to help us continue to grow and experience that, that rapid growth, but not have the wild, wild west chaos. Yeah, exactly. Forecasting. Have you been able to forecast accurately, accurately over the past few months? No. 
I would say that's really difficult, especially as we are, it is a focus of ours, but especially as our sales process has changed, a lot of the data or any of the data that we had around how long a sales process takes or how long is the sales cycle, how long should this opportunity stay in a certain sales stage has changed. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a big difference between going from needing to, to work through a, a revenue cycle essentially with the customer because they'll be paying as opposed to just selling something for free. Um, and also with Hazel Health, now that we're selling into new states, there's also a process on the back end where we need to license our providers and get licensed in the state for insurance as well to sell there. So um, there's several processes going on. Uh, it's just very different from how it was. So forecasting is something that we are working towards. So we're right now, the way we forecast is working with the reps and we've created a way in Salesforce for them to determine that if it's pipeline, best case or commit. So um, that's new language across the sales team, putting deals into commit that they know, feel confident are going to close by the close date. Um, so that's what we're using for forecasting right now. And then building our pipeline so that we can have the um, the standard three times amount in your pipeline of what your goal is. Got it. So like relatively early stages and then the chaos, I guess, of the last few months didn't help with the accurate forecasting, but you're putting the stuff in place to do that more accurately in the future. Yes. And it's all good things, all good growth. Exactly. Yeah. I, 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 just, just for context for the audience, a year ago, how many sales reps did you guys have? Um, I think just about two or three. Got it. Okay. So, so that makes I, sense. I, yeah. I joined Hazel House at the beginning of July. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. And so you, you're just like, it, it, it makes sense for for you to come in at this point, right? Because there's some formalization, let's say, that, that needs to happen. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. Throughout my career, I've come in at different points in a company's life cycle um, and sometimes much later than Hazel Health. But Hazel Health seems very... They're very forward-thinking and recognize the need for sales operations. Yeah, I think more and more businesses are recognizing the need. It's almost like this people are just starting to come around to why it's important to, to have someone who is like guiding or helping the, the main revenue driver of the business. Mm -hmm. And I think just wanting those insights into to data that, um, you know, you've got the sales team that's focused on selling. You usually have an, an engineering or development team that's focused on the product. Um, so somebody who's able to put a lot of those data points together and provide a bigger picture Makes so yeah, because otherwise who's going to do it? Like the sales manager probably wants to spend time with the reps, mm -hmm. uh, and then like the sales leader doesn't want to be that like in the detail. So it makes total sense. Anyway, we're not we're we're here, we're here to talk about you. So next question is about KPIs. Now I want to broaden this out to, to the, the whole of your sales ops career. Which um, sales metric have you, do you think you've got the most value from throughout the whole of your career? Um, good question, because I've had different companies focus on activity, um, but activity doesn't, just having activity doesn't guarantee that it's the right kind of activity. So it's not always the best metric to look at. Um, I would say it would need to be something at the beginning of the sales process around the conversion. So metrics related to, are we putting qualified leads into the pipeline? Because if we start there, then that tells us a lot about our sales reps and um, what we can expect from the top of the funnel on down. Got it. And has that metric changed with what you've been looking at over the past, well, since you joined Hebel Health, actually? Um... Yes, it has. We have not been putting in as many new leads lately, um, but we have been converting more leads that are in our system just due to being able to to sell much easier and also open up into more states. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Now, moving on to our final two questions, and actually the most important questions, in my opinion, is who 
throughout your career has kind of taught you or inspired you the most? Love the question. Um, there's actually several people that come to mind, but if I had to say the most, it would probably be my manager when I was at LPS Integration. Um, and LPS Integration was acquired by Data Blue and then acquired by Ahead. So it's now Ahead, and my former manager is still there. Um, <clears throat> he's a sales rep there. So the reason he, he's been a mentor for me even after I left LPS Integration and throughout several, my time at several other companies. And part of that reason is because he's, he's had experience in multiple different roles of the sales process but also always been willing to go the extra mile. So even as a sales rep, if he needed to dabble in pre-sales work to get the job done for the customer, he would do that. If he needed to manage his own project, then he would do that as well. So he has experience across the entire sales process um, and has also been a sales manager there. So, <clears throat> And then he was also the first director of sales operations at LPS Integration. So he's been with the company as they've been acquired twice and grown from 25, 30 employees to I think now they have 600 to 800 with the acquisition of Ahead um, or with the latest acquisition from Ahead. So it would probably be uh, Thomas Swan. So he's always been someone that I've been able to ask questions or bounce ideas off of as I've continued my career at other companies. Shout out to, to Thomas. And then the the final question would be who else in the world of sales ops potentially that you do or do not know would you like to take for lunch? Yes. So I do know her and her name is Jessica Sprinkle. She's the CEO of Sponge, which is a demand gen and marketing ops consulting company. Um, but she has phenomenal experience in sales ops. So she's been doing consulting for Oh, I'm not even sure. I've been working with her off and on for at least three or four years now. Um, and she's able to just take any challenge that seems very complicated and chaotic and make it in a very simple, streamlined way and then implement that into a CRM or across the sales company. Um, so she's experienced in healthcare, logistics, AI, um, She'll be working with us at Hazel Health some as well with our Salesforce CRM. So she's just got phenomenal knowledge on on sales ops, marketing ops, and all the pieces that go together to really make a successful sales operation. Amazing. We well, we'll have to track her down and see if she'd like to <laughs> jump on the show. You should. You should. She she's got a, a wealth of knowledge. Well, Lisa, thanks so much for coming on. I mean, it, it sounds like a super interesting job you have uh, like over the coming months and years at uh, Havel Health. Um, it's like the recent development with the selling process and the fact that you're coming in to essentially design your own sales off department. So I think it's a super exciting time. Thank you. Yeah, it is really exciting. There's a lot of change and growth. Um, and especially it's just an awesome mission with Hazel Health, providing health care to students, especially right now. Um, and it's I'm learning a lot as our goals aren't revenue based, but they're the number of students that we're reaching, which is really cool and aligns with our mission. Amazing. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for taking the time out of the the debt, like the the chaos, um, and uh, spending it with us. So it's been a pleasure <laughs> having you on. Thank you, Pam. I enjoyed it. <laughs>